Good afternoon everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking to you about shampoo ginger. Now this is a pretty rare plant, especially in our zone. Shampoo ginger or ginger lily. There's all kind of names for it. It's a pretty rare plant, especially like I said where we live at. We're here in zone 7. This is a tropical plant. Now shampoo ginger, ginger lily does great in zone 8, 9, 10. On up, you guys understand what I'm talking about. But for us guys, zone 7, uh, there are people that's growing shampoo ginger successfully. However, there are some things that you have to do to it in order to overwinter it. And there's two different ways. We're going to talk about both methods. And we're going to show you which method we chose to overwinter our shampoo ginger. And uh, we'll see how it does next year. Okay, so we are in the herb garden. And here is our shampoo ginger. Um, we bought a couple of sprouts. And then we split them and put them up in pots every one of them has took off really good now as you can see we do have strawberries uh, pretty much taken over back here in this back corner and we may destroy a few of those plants in this process um, however it's just going to have to be done and as you can tell we're not really hurting those strawberries they go all around here now um, there's not a lot of information on this plant uh, there is some out there but as far as our zone goes there's hardly anything at all on how to grow this or overwinter it uh, I will go ahead and post a picture of what ours looked like when we first put them in here. They was just normal little ginger tap roots, and this whole uh, year they've grown into this. However, we didn't get any pine cones, and I heard that may be typical the very first time you do plant it, especially in the zone we're living in. Now, the two ways that you can overwinter this, uh, the first way is to dig up your rhizomes, take them in the house, um, put them in a pot, and you can finish them in the house or overwinter them. They will go dormant. However, they are going to need some light. Uh, you're going to treat them just like you're trying to grow plants. However, you're just not going to keep it as warm and you're not going to have such intense light. Um, somewhere by a really bright window may work. But you do want to have a cycle of light and dark and, uh, you know, keep it in a typically warm house. Um, that, that's one way. A lot of times people will just take those rhizomes. Um, put them in something like a paper bag and just keep them over winter i believe just my opinion that they may dry out before we can get them back out on the ground so we're going to overwinter these uh, by insulation and that's the second way the second way is um, you do the same thing you cut the rhizomes down to about four to six inches and then you really want to pack this ground with the best insulation that you can to keep these rhizomes from freezing over the winter now we have harsh winters here but we don't have as harsh winters as some of you guys up north um, so um, we're going to have to at least go with about i don't know somewhere around three foot of insulation three foot high and we're just going to cover this whole entire area here with our insulation now you can use cardboard straw uh, we're going to use mulch first to hold in a lot of the moisture we'll put about two foot of that in and we'll probably come back with the foot of straw and uh We'll go ahead and show you guys how we do that. And uh, as you can tell, we got the yard tractor over here. We already got about eight cubic feet of mulch or wood chips that's been broken down over time. So that's great stuff. But first, we got to cut these down. And we're going to show you guys how we do that. These things grew at least four foot through the year. But as you can tell, instead of this pretty dark green, we're starting to see signs of these plants just aren't really happy with our 45 and 50 degree nights uh, if that tells you how much you have to insulate them because they definitely will not survive 40 degrees at night or lower um, they just won't come back they'll completely die off these plants aren't used to that type of cold environment so before our nights turn off too cold we're hitting about 45 50 degrees and to me that's still a little extreme so we're going to go ahead and insulate these babies and see if we can get them to come back next year and the next thing we're going to do is get ourselves a, a good set of garden loppers whatever you want to use um, to me i'm going to go ahead and say that a sharp cut is much better than a crush cut because we're just going to be uh, overlapping these things with mulch anyway so so we're going to go ahead and just measure one finger, try to get us about three and a half, four inches off each one of these.
clear out any weeds. Though it don't really matter, they're not going to grow back, but it's the OCD in me. I listen. Okay, so we're going to keep cutting until all of our ginger lily are about this high. And then we'll get back to you. We're going to go ahead and start on those guys over there. Okay, so all four sets are done. There's the set. These two was planted together. And then all the way over here's the set. And then right here's the set. Now the next thing is to start bringing our mulch from up at the main garden called the Alpha Garden and dumping them in here until we get a good two and a half, three foot deep on insulation with the wood chips and the mulch. Okay guys, so it's getting pretty dark. I'm done. There we are about eye level. Now, one thing you want to remember is you do have a cold edge. And what we mean by a cold edge is the edges around your uh, insulation pile, if you'll notice, it's just uh, quite a bit thinner than it is right here. So I made sure that all of my plants was at the peak height right here in the dead center and we don't have anything on these edges because you have much less insulation here than you do right here so you want to keep them in that thickest area and we have somewhere around 28 inches right there so far and uh, that may be all i'm going to do to them since i have one right here one here and one here all in the thick area uh, i'm probably just going to leave it there we'll keep it like that i may cover it with some straw but other than that um, we're not going to do nothing and we'll wait and see how everything uh, comes along next year. We'll show you guys how we uncover them um, and we'll check for new growth. And uh, we'll just follow them along next year. Now, Bobby and I want to thank everybody for watching. And as always, keep on keeping on, folks.